Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave, and next to me, yes, is Proton Pack. Let's be clear, this is not the first time you've caught me in here with a Proton Pack. Um, I have been a Ghostbusters fanatic since I was 17 and the original film came out. And we did a bunch of coverage, as I said, of Afterlife and one of the original Phoebe packs came here to the cave. We got to cover it. We got to show you reference material. Links are in the description. What is here is again a Phoebe pack, except this is the soon to, re soon to be released Hasbro Haslabs Proton Pack. These guys were here in the cave showing us a prototype of this 12 months ago. I, when Norm told me it was 12 months ago, I actually didn't believe my, it felt like it's only been three or four months since they were here. It's been a year. And I had given them some reference material when they were here. Like I showed them that their, uh, that their ladder frame here, which is right here, wasn't entirely accurate. And I showed, I actually lent them this piece, which is cast from a screen used original ladder frame from the original film. Uh, and dude, they nailed it. Like. They nailed it. There's even, I have reference pictures in here of the original Phoebe pack. Hold on, there is a piece here that I wanted to cover. Yes, so there are dings in the, uh, 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 in the frame here on the Phoebe pack that Hasbro replicated precisely to the shooting original and the witness marks are there. Their fidelity has been astounding. Um, I've been frequently saying over the last few years that it, has been, that it is a great time right now to be a cosplayer and a prop collector because uh, large companies are expending real time and energy making accurate, playable, usable pieces of movie kit. And this might be the best one I have seen. Dude, also, it doesn't come with the neutrino wand. We covered this even earlier than this. However, they do play together. And this is a really interesting story. When they developed the neutrino wand, they didn't yet know that they were going to develop the Phoebe pack. Thus, this hasn't, wasn't built with any circuitry meant to play with this. So how did they deal with that? They did a really ingenious, ingenious solution. So normally the neutrino wand came with a battery pack that slipped in here and, a, uh, and an end and that powered this up. What they have done is created an extension cable for the Phoebe pack with a pair of contacts at the end of the wire that connects to the neutrino wand and detects when these switches are hit. Of course it would know because the battery pack has to know. So when you turn these on, there we go. Sound and lights. No, this is great. So we turn this on. Now this goes. Wait. Yes. When you turn this off, this detects the drop in voltage and shuts itself down. And then you can turn it back on again. Ah! Uh, but what I am going to do. Oh, yes. Because I've been Ghostbusters addled <laughs> for well over a decade. Um, I am going to accuratize this. I'm gonna do some modifications on the HasLab Ghostbusters Phoebe pack. Uh, there's some beautiful surprises inside. This whole cover comes off and you can see the inside just like in the film. We're gonna do some detailing in there. Um, here's what I love about the HasLab folks. They included an extra pair of stickers. So the stickers here are all screen accurately weathered and worn, and they've included a second set of them in case you want to do your own weathering of them. That is a great ethos. That is lovely. In addition, in addition, I have 12 years of collected stickers from various packs that I have put together and I'm still planning to put together. And so I am going to do a mix and match here. I mean, might use some of theirs. I might use some of mine. I have some bits and pieces I'm going to replace. Their, uh, their V-block that holds on the Neutrino one. I don't, it's a little bit anemic. It's almost identical to the original, but it's just has a little less gripping power. So I'm swapping that out for an original set, a correct set. 
uh, and I'm going to pop those in. Uh, I may add some. I may add some bits of electrical tape and other stuff. Oh, right, uh, the the yellow part of the Phoebe pack. This is actually the screen correct uh, material. So I'm going to swap out this Kevlar they've got here with this stuff. Uh, and a few other things. There's going to be some rub and buff. There's going to be some washes of rust and stuff. And hopefully within a few hours, we'll have a, uh, a delightfully accuratized, cosplayable, troopable uh, proton pack. Dude, uh, for the price point this is, it's, it's really uh, unparalleled out there in the toy market. It's just a really exciting bit of kit. Uh, and I have been, oh, I've been chomping at the bit to do this specific build for a long time. While this is going, I want to point out the animation on the spinning uh, 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 cyclotron is really nice. It feels, they've timed it so it definitely feels like the one in the film, which is actually a mechanical spinning light. That was one of Jason's addition. Oh, and, dude, hold on, off. Nice. Uh, they also included, ho, ho, ho. Uh, a whole bunch of extra hardware. What is this hardware for, you ask? Oh, it's so cool. It is for adding your own correct Alice frame to the back of this. It has backpack straps. It has backpack straps, which you can use. So you can troop with it right out of the box. But if you want to add your own Alice frame, that's the hardware to do it. And I am going to do it. Dude. That is like a level of paying attention to the final consumer that is really, really thrilling. Um, I think where to begin is to actually pull some things off of this. So first up, let's take off the backpack straps. Oh, yeah. I, well, I wonder if we should also pull this off or secure it. Let's secure it for right now. By the way, I also really appreciate their um, how robust this is because you always want to grab it by this, but no one grabs their own packs by that thing. But like, yeah, robust. Uh, okay. So, yeah, let's work towards getting all of this stuff out of here. We don't have to cut any of it, I don't think. Yeah, let's get past the triglides here. All right. And that. Yeah, this is all useful strappage. We keep it all. Oh, they've also included this extra little bit. Um, they've included a little secret hideaway. Later, what I might consider, there's a bigger mod to potentially do, which is to swap out the whole motherboard for a more accurate motherboard. The motherboard is the main board that it backs up the proton pack. It's a quarter inch piece of aluminum uh, on the hero packs. It's often wood for troopers who want lightness. Um, in this case, it is about five eighths of an inch thick, half inch, five eighths. Um, and I am not going to attack it today. Um, but on the back here, you can see where the hardware goes for, oh my God, they've made it that it actually fits the actual thing. It's kind of mind blowing. So where does it attach? Oh, I guess there's directions somewhere. Let's see here. Let me just sort of figure this out. There are four brackets, too high and too low. So I'm gonna guess that these guys sit here. Yep. Right. Yes. Okay, good. That That is a knowable thing. And that sits there. Great. Lovely spacer blocks. First up, these guys go here because that's the whole pattern. One, two, three. Ah, uh, now I get it. Those are those. And these of the, of the three bears Goldilocks variety go like this. The tall one goes back there, the medium one goes there, the shorty pie goes there, and these are all the screws that bring them into their final submission. That's great. They 
could not have made that easier. And they've included threaded inserts in the plastic. This is a robust solution, but now I know how it all goes. That is really clever, everybody. Okay. You live there. Okay. Let's take an overall look here at this pack. Um, and as I do, man, so much of their dressing is just so well done. Right, so this goes through there, goes on top of there. This goes underneath there, goes there. And that goes to there. And I can pop that out of both sides. Great. Um, I may just add a little red electrical tape to that and I may do a little brass on there. That looks great. Those look great. That looks fine. That comes there. That's a good part. I have some pieces that are close to that. This guy. Yeah, I want to swap out this yellow housing. That's for sure. sure. The clippered valve is actually aluminum, which blows my mind and doesn't need much. Everything else here needs a little bit of, oh, right. Yes, yes, yeah, the cable. Um, this is not the correct cable. This is a Ghostbusters 2 type cable. Uh, and I have some good Ghostbusters 1 type cables, so let me see if I can't. Yes, look at that, that just pops right out. Oh, wow, they've really, they've made it quite easy to remove. Now the question is, how is it? Okay. Hey everybody, Norm just pointed out to me that power is conducted through these little retractable pins, not this piece, so I can easily pull that off. Yay! Thank you, sir. I was nervous and I was trying to figure out a way around that. Okay. So this yellow wire loom covering is just not entirely accurate. This is the accurate stuff. We'll include a link to this in the description below. Um, this, this actually might be real Kevlar and I, I'm really surprised they would use real Kevlar. But at any rate, um, we, can, we can put that with the, I don't ever throw anything away. Um, the other thing about this specific wire is that it's a, um, a wrapping loom, and I actually think I have some of that stuff. So let me see if I have it over here. Ah! Come on, come on, come on. Oh, really? I guess I'm going to go the whole thing? Okay. All right, all right, all right. Stop. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. So yeah, this is the exact correct wire loom. Um, if we can find it, we'll include a link in the description. I, I did at one point have a master document of where all this stuff came from. So I am definitely gonna swap out that cable, but I need to get to its backside because I want to get rid of both the, uh, the ribbon cable and that wire loom cable. So it looks like I got one, two, three, four, five, six, Yeah, 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 all right. Yeah, we're gonna do some disassembly. Here we go. Feels like I got everything. Thing below that that I'm missing. might be one of those moments where they like pop that in and then because that's popped in like that, there's a screw boss in there. I can show it to you and I'm just gonna cut it. This is a surgical tool. I picked this up on eBay. I don't know what it's for cutting, but it means business uh, and I'm about to go in here and get rid of this screw boss using it. Here we go. Oh, dude, it is literally the perfect tool for this job. Okay, let's get it around there. Okay, okay so. Uh, 
ja. Well, now I've lost my flashlight in there. I keep feeling like I'm going to just get to the right screw and it's all just going to like pop apart. Show me where you are holding it. You're holding them right there. But there's nothing there. There's nothing in the heart with This is the pause where I'm taking in the fact that it's all because I forgot one screw. Yeah, it's easier. It <laughs> turns out it's easier than it looks. <laughs> you don't have to work as hard as I do. You just made sure make sure you get to all the screws. This is how they did their threaded inserts. They sank nuts into the back sides of these. That's wonderful. There's the battery pack. Here, here is where. Here is where the cable comes through. You can see they've routed the power. It also means that if one wants to pull the power and move it elsewhere in here, you can have more room in this secret compartment, which I particularly did because I'd love to put the smoke machine in here. Well, that's great. Um, we're gonna leave this off for much of this because putting it back together is, uh, that'll be the last thing. So I'm wondering whether or not to snip these or just desolder them and resolder them later. Boink and boink. So, uh, where to begin? That is the power. Oh. I am very smart. That's why I snipped the cable that had a removable plug on it. I am very smart. I am positive that there were HasLab people watching me do that going, no, 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 <laughs> don't do it. Dude, what are you doing? Okay, that's the volume, right? That's the volume knob. Oh, that's amazing. Speaker comes out up there. Oh, okay, that's where that goes, great. Let's swap out this cable. Oh, nice. They've actually made them really quite difficult to pull out of the pack, which is great. They've made a very robust connection. But now we can. And is there a third thing that sticks in there? One. Ooh, excellent. Okay, we have a really good platform now here for reconstruction. Um, I'm going to hold on to how this grabs. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is tricky. That's a little trickier because that's sonically welded. But I think I can get to that. All right. This guy. That's that. That's that. I just happened to notice that this wasn't perfectly straight coming out of there, and I didn't like that, so I'm actually gonna give it a little bit of a tighter bend on my vise here. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a... Thwack, thwack. Uh, better, still not exactly right. Uh, yeah. That was significant. See what that did. Yeah, that's it. Much better. Great. Nice. Nice and straight. Uh, all right. This is uh, this is correct Phoebe Pack ribbon cable, um, which is to say it's correct to GB nineteen eighty four, which is different than Ghostbusters 2 ribbon cable. This is hard stuff to find. I pay a lot for these, uh, and I think I have two left. I might have three. Um, and I'm gonna use one of them on this pack here. Uh, because, yeah, this is, this is how they did it. They did it with this, and then they 
twisted this puppy, but first it was really, really weathered up and beaten up. So we're gonna give it a little bit of weathering and beating with, I actually just pulled this out today. Yeah. Uh, right there. Bingo. There's that. What is this? This is one of my favorite weathering, uh, weathering sprays, streaks and tips. This is a hair color, um, but it's super high temperature. So back in the early days when I was working in film, back in the early days, uh, you could spray a, a hot light bulb with this and it will not burn and it will lower the value of that light bulb. It's amazing stuff. This is a primary weathering colors, black and brown for R2-D2. Um, and it adds, it, right, it blackens stuff up really nicely. I'll be able to take this down with some, um, uh, some Scotch-Brite uh, and uh, rubbing alcohol. So you just, you know, get yourself some reasonable dirt on the thing and then you can bring it all the way back if you need to bring it all the way back. All you need is a, hold on, just a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and you can uh, bring it all the way back. So yeah, among the, the first thing to do is just to kind of, you know, wipe it off. And just always, you want to get non-random, I'm sorry, random. You want random, <laughs> not non-random. All right, I'll dry this off. Now it's starting to look right. Okay, so we're gonna get one end into this bad boy. There we go. Yeah, they've done a pretty good job trying to glue this in. So I'm having to subvert their glue, but that's fine. Or maybe it's sonically welded, I can't quite tell, but at any rate, there's still a slot I can get into here. I'm definitely able to free up enough space for this cable, which is great. Let's just get a little bit more. Yep. So we're gonna get that all up in there. Yeah, excellent. So all I did was the, um, the original cable was held in here with a set of uh, posts that went through it. So you could yank on it really hard and it wouldn't let go. They really thought through ways in which people were going to be not nice to these packs and tried to make sure that they would still survive, which is great. So all I did was I went in with some nice surface uh, uh, flush mount, flush cut nippers, and I took out both sides of all those pens, pulled it out, cleaned it out, used the Dremel to open up the slot. And now we are almost, where we need to be. Just gonna get a little more glue in there and great. I haven't, I haven't decreased its functionality. Got a little more going on. I know, I know I don't like glue. I know that usually I think of glue as a less than ideal solution, but it's fine for right now. Um, one of the key bits of detailing on the Proton Pack is, uh, rusted cap head quarter 20s. Two of them hold the, the ladder frame down. We're gonna take off that piece. Yeah, gone, gone. And then we are going to quarter 20. We're going to drill this out. I always use tapping fluid, always. I don't know. I, yeah, there we go. That, that, look at that, right there. Now we have some authenticity. Yeah, that's great. That's a hand tight, that's all you really need. Um, let us swap out the uh, V 
block. Okay. You come out and where's your neighbor? Give me some sugar. I am your neighbor. That's the old one. That goes with the old parts. This is the, that's the, yeah, there we go. That's the one. Excellent. Yeah, they've made it pretty easy. And then that will sit much more like that. That's great. Wow, it even fits this better. I'm not even sure I have to replace both parts of that equation. I think I can just leave that one there. That's great. So you just need one half of a good V block. I feel like this has been settled long enough so I can start to put this in and give it the twisty poo. And it twists that way. Whoa, hey, yeah, bop, bop, lots of force. Lots of force and totally let go. Total failure. Okay, plan B, the actual way they did it. This is Good, that is nice. That's a nice positive grab. So now I can do the real twisty on this. And as I do it, we're going to come up and around and into here, right? Yep. All right, good, 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 got it. Okay, so. I could almost just do that, and that would be still hard to pull that guy out, but I also still have two other cables that have to go in there. Actually, they don't. They can go elsewhere in there. Okay, right. This is the actual correct holder. This is their version of the correct holder, and you can see they've nailed the size beautifully, but I've got the real thing, baby. Nice. So that I'm feeling really good about. This guy is almost entirely silver. So we're gonna pull this sticker off. We're gonna paint it and we're gonna go back to it. Yep, I'm just gonna fix you up later. Okay, uh, this guy is good. I don't mind that. I think that's great. Um, so this gets some rub and buff right behind you. Just hit this with a little bit of rub and buff. I'm hitting it with a lot, I know. Dude, there's just nothing that looks like real electrical tape except real electrical tape. It's great. I'm oh, just wrapping some around up there. Good. In each case, I'm going slightly over the molded electrical tape shape. Just so, yeah, once we hit this with a, a little bit of our mud wash, it's all gonna disappear. So that can go in there. Wait, yep, yeah, that can go in there. And then that comes up under there. 
Good. I like it. Happy. under and that connects up to this bad boy right there like that great wonderful uh yeah this guy can go back onto here oh clippered clippered label yeah we're gonna do a better clippered label than this one i like this this is metallic this is not this will look a lot better um no we're gonna just do that we'll do it at the same way they did it start it there Bring it around. Uh, I know what the issue is. I know exactly what the issue is. I'll explain it in a minute. To explain more clearly, when you injection mold stuff as this plastic piece was injection molded. You have to get your injection molded part back out of the mold. One of the best ways to do that is to include a draft angle. So these sides are not parallel, they're slightly conical, and that makes the whole part easier to remove from the mold. For an aesthetic piece like this that most people are gonna see like this, that's fine to give it those soft shoulders so it's easier to release from the tool, but it means that the sticker does not wrap perfectly around. So I am just gonna chuck this into my lathe and I'm just gonna hit it with a cutoff bit. Is that gonna work? We'll see. We don't know, we're not sure. I'm just gonna hit it with a cutoff bit and kind of straighten it out. Well, that seems to have worked just great. Yeah, it's dirty up there, but I think that did what we needed it to do. Just took a little bit of meat off the bottom here to straighten those out. And now the puppy wraps cooperatively around. Look at that. Really lovely. Oh, sexy. Okay. So I need to make the loom, and the loom has the following colors in it. Black, red, green, white. Right, and we're swapping it out for this. Oh, I see what they've done. They've actually attempted to in-mold this mesh covering, and then they went over it again with a different one, which sounds like it was an iterative process of figuring out the right way to get that covering on. Okay, so we're gonna make this loom. Nice. All right, so there is that. Okay, now the loom. The loom! There it is. And the loom starts, it goes from here. The loom starts right about, oh no, the loom starts just about an inch out, great. Yeah, and then it kind of disappears. All right, so we'll just take this one all the way up. Yes, good, good, good. All right, almost there. Awesome. Okay, now it gets some of this business. Yep. Oh, wait, I gotta weather this guy. Hold on. Yeah. So, streaks and tips, there you are. Yeah, yeah, starting to look like the thing. Yep. Good. Good, and that comes down there and comes to there, and that goes under that and then comes out through here. Good, that's great. We can get a little more rub and buff on the, yeah, on the resistor there. And the same thing on there. Oh yeah, let's get that. Yep, a little bit of metallic on this resistor. Get some on the screws there. 
And this guy gets a ton of. You can never use too much rub and buff on a proton pack. That is for sure. I have the uh, correct strain relief that these represent, that these represent, but frankly, their molded ones are great. Also, my dirty, filthy hands are so wonderful for this yellow electrical tape. It's like being aestheticized as I use it. It's wonderful. By the way, rub and buff on top of the little copper rubber thingies, fantastic, looks great. If you go a little far, a little scotch bright will bring you right back. If you don't have scotch bright, use the green part of a sponge from your house. That's the same stuff. Oh. Yeah, honestly, she's just buying this is like a master class in some quick and dirty weathering and what you can tolerate and how far you want to take it and how you want to make it all look. It's just great. A note about this build. I am not doing a, this is not a one day build for a full inner and outer detailing of the uh, HasLabs Proton Pack. Um, it is an amazing Proton Pack and it is worthy of a full internal detailing, but that is not the scope of today's build. I'm gonna do a full external detailing and the internal detailing, which for me actually involves cutting out a lot of this stuff and swapping it out for real wire or maybe even 3D printing something, that'll be a separate build. Um, just for clarity. Okay, so I like that, I like that, that's correct. Uh, lettuce, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we can get a lot more rub and buff on this guy. The Phoebe pack is weathered to hell. That is just, be really clear on that. It is really weathered. And I'm gonna temper some of this back with a, uh, well, I'm gonna do a couple things. I'm gonna get this to a point at which it's ready for its final weathering passes, and then I'm gonna wait overnight and come in tomorrow and see it with fresh eyes. But for right now, let us get this business. Good. Awesome. I'm really happy with how this weathering is going. It's so much fun, dude. Okay. Well, that goes together pretty nicely. Uh, let us put the batteries in and make sure it still functions before we seal it up. That's it. Good. Okay, so. There are different types of screws holding the proton pack to the motherboard frame. There's two angle irons that come up underneath and they're often, in the older packs, they're these quarter 20 rusted pan heads, uh, sorry, cap heads. Uh, but in the Phoebe pack, they are, I believe, uh, well, they're probably metric, but the, uh, the American version is gonna be a, uh, 1024, that's what I think it is. And I'll get these with some, some paint treatment too. And then, because I believe I saw it, I am sure, there you are. There's definitely one over here, uh, which is like right about there, give or take. Okay. 
All right, there's that. Great. Um, that's ready for a paint treatment. See, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Look how good that electrical tape looks. Great. Time for the Alice pack. Goes like that. So I do one there and one there. The idea that somebody built a toy that could fit a piece of actual hardware from something else is pretty amazing to me. They've included some nice big fat screws for this. There we go. All right, now I wanna hit that with some streaks and tips, bring it all back. this sit tonight. That looks fantastic for that. Honestly, that is molded rubber and it looks absolutely like the gas mask cloth cover that was the exit for this puppy. Uh, this only goes in one specific way and then it gets dialed in. Oh yeah, let's get some rub and buff on there. This guy connects there, and that is a nice positive grab. Dude, that is a respectable rig. I feel like we could almost call this. Okay, it has uh, been overnight, and we've come back in, and I can't stress enough the value of taking a break while doing a weathering pass and coming back. Uh, it is so easy to get over, to get in over your head with a weathering pass to the point at which you're not sure you can see the thing anymore. Uh, and it's just a natural part of, of, of weathering, right? You're crawling over the thing and you're both trying to look at it micro and macro. You're trying to zoom in and out and trying to find out where things catch your eye and where they don't. Taking a day is a great way to come back in. And uh, look, I thought this, last night, I thought this was a mediocre paint job. I come in this morning and I actually think it's a pretty good paint job. Um, the streaks and tips left me dirtier than I have been in a long time. Um, 
I, I spent like 20 minutes washing my hands last night when I got home. Um, but I am really, really happy with how this thing looks right now. Oh, I realize that goes on the bottom. Okay. Um, just for reference, what I have done thus far is I replaced a ribbon cable with a more correct ribbon cable. These are expensive and hard to find, so I think that'll be a, a lesser common mod. Although, <clears throat> the, the small economy that has grown up around the Spirit Halloween three-quarter size proton pack tells me that there's going to be an ample support community for this pack, and I cannot wait to see I mean, the pass that I'm doing here in terms of accuracy is medium at best. I have some spectacular reference material. I have photos of the original Phoebe pack, uh, but the deep dives that all the members of the ghost busting trooping community goes into way surpasses my level of specific knowledge. Um, so uh, I replaced the ribbon cable, I replaced the yellow cable housing, I added electrical tape to all the places it was molded in, in detail. Uh, I did a whole bunch of rub and buff around, I just added rub and buff almost everywhere. The, the weathering on the real thing is significant. Uh, and then I hit a whole bunch with ivory black uh, streaks and tips which is, it's again, streaks and tips is not a permanent weathering solution. Uh, it tends to, it's almost powdery uh, when it goes on. And frankly, that's kind of one of the reasons I like it. It's very take on, put onable and take offable. And you can also give it a clear coat, settle it in and then keep moving. Um, today, here is what I am doing. I am going to add, uh, little bits of copper tape to each of these little uh, Phoebe wires. Those are the most distinctive part of the Phoebe pack, up here, down here. Uh, I am going to do a, a, a muddy weathering pass because extra layers of color are always right. Always right. This looks fine, this is fine. No one would complain if I took this out, but it will just be better if I give it a, uh, a, a weathering pass. And then, uh, is there anything else that I am forgetting? About? Oh, the other thing that I did here is I, uh, this is a great check-in for me this morning. Uh, I, gave, I gave the, um, this is a gas mask hose on the real Phoebe pack. Uh, Hasbro has molded it perfectly like it is a stunner of a piece uh i gave it a quick dust coat of some tamiya gray primer uh, and that i'm very happy with how that looks we've just got a few small things to bring this thing into the final oh uh so i would just like to uh show you a couple things about how good this model is um one is here is my proton pack that I built on this channel and showed to Jason Reitman is almost all metal. It is, it, it's all got machined metal parts all over it. It's really, really nice pack. It's heavy, but super beautiful. Um, and I'm also in the process of making a lighter weight pack. And so this is my replica of the, oh God, I can't remember the name for all these things. This is my replica for the piece that goes up here. And this is plastic. I love this piece because the rusted bolts, it just looks like a really right, piece. And the Hasbro piece, man, it is 98%. Seriously, it's it's right up there. It is, it's a great piece. Uh, the other one I wanted to show you was, this is the correct strain relief that was used on the packs. This is a wire strain relief to keep the wire from kinking as it exits something. And I just want to show you that next to Hasbro's molded one, dude. There is no reason to go and replace these cables. They are every bit as accurate as one could need them to be. Uh, anyway, one more compliment for the folks at Hasbro because this thing is just so gorgeous. <sighs> Let's get into it. Frankly, this stand is amazing for all this painting. It's held up against a lot. All right, so, yeah. This one too.
So I'm doing what's called, I'm locking in the paint job right now. I'm using a matte finish uh, Rust-Oleum to just kind of put a dust coat all over. Now the, and the, that'll keep the streaks and tips from running because it, you know, it settles in as a kind of a powder, but it'll also, it'll also deepen this whole paint job a little bit. Whew. Um, it'll prevent me from getting filthy as I handle it, but it'll also set me up nicely for the next layer. Um, and these are the kind of really subtle things that make a paint job really sing. Okay, so let's just get this guy. I'm covering over all the lighting parts. I don't really care. It all helps. All right, we'll let that sit for a minute. It's just the lightest dusting. Really? <clears throat> okay. We just have a few finishing touches to put on here. Uh, this thing is just looking so great from a close-up perspective. And boy, do I want to get to the interior of the Cyclotron. But again, that's a separate build. It's not for today's scope. Today, I'm going to add a couple more little details that will bring this thing into its final state exterior-wise. Uh, and that is these little copper wires all around the base of the clippered valve are very much the, the, the uh, exemplifying detail of Phoebe's pack. And Hasbro's done an amazing job <coughs> of routing them correctly, using the correct number of them. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a bit of this copper tape and I'm gonna put a little piece of copper at the edge of every single one of these pieces and that is gonna bring it in. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up some rust. I'm gonna show you how to do actively powdering rust and I'm gonna dress some of the exterior screws here. And then we're gonna call this puppy done because it looks great. It's ready for the ball. Okay. Bring it in here. Lay it on top. And then use the forceps. Oh, <laughs> it's great. So happy with that. I'm gonna give a little bit of a pass of black paint to this copper just to take it down a value. Just to add a little dirt in there and to, uh, yeah. I always do the dark passes on a weather after the lighter passes. It um, helps me see things a little better. Yeah, I'll get those going. That's a little bright. Now I'm just going in doing what I call taking care of the hot spots. Like everything that draws your eye a little bit, just like bring it down. Does it look too regular, too irregular? It's all those things. Let's see here. Got it all. Okay, so now we're gonna do one more mud pass on everything. So, uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm giving it a spritz of isopropyl alcohol. Uh, which has a thinning effect on acrylic. And if you look over here, you'll see, I give it a spritz there. And then I come in with this light brown mixture. This is a mix of yellow ochre, burnt sienna, burnt umber, uh, and some artist medium. And I come in and I just, I give it a little bit of this crap. And then I come in and I take most of it off. And you can see it lands here in the little corners, right? That's the whole point of the alcohol is it brings it all in and kind of, makes the dirt settle where dirt would settle and just adds this one extra layer. You can kind of get the same result with Fuller's Earth, but uh, that is also a pass that I'll end up doing on this. All right, so yeah, get it in there. Uh -huh. Sometimes you can hit, hit it with some alcohol after the fact. 
But so yeah, I'm just going in and kind of adding in some dirt, letting the alcohol flash off, watching what it looks like. Oh, whoops. And trying not to put the dirt on the same spot in everything, right? You don't want to put it in the same place every time. Oh, right, you live there. Wait, no, you live there, like that. There you go. Ooh. Sometimes the paint will run on you. Sometimes this will be like the greatest thing that ever happened. <laughs> Sometimes you'll be like, no, stop running. See, just a little bit of warmth. That's what it does. Here, I'll show you here. Watch here, it's a little bit cold. I'm gonna bring this in and then give it a little bit of a, just a, you know, and then I bring it, Bag, <gasps> and now it looks like the weld is rusting in the weld. Mm, so good. All right, let's uh, get the other side here. It is gorgeous, gorgeous. Last thing I want to show you how to do is a little bit of a dusty rust, and we're gonna do it on these four screws up here, and I'm gonna add it to some other screws. All right, so here's how this technique goes. I am using a type of powdered clay called Barnard clay. I don't know what Barnard clay is used for. It was in Jamie's shop 30 years ago, and I liked it so much, I went to the ceramic supply place that's no longer in San Francisco and I bought a little bag of Barnard clay and I still have that bag 30 years later using little bits of it for exactly this specific thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little matte spray, I'm gonna spray it into a cup like that. Then we're gonna take that cup and, hold on, we're gonna take a brush and we're going to paint one of these nuts here. We're just gonna get a little bit of the matte finish on the nut. Then we're gonna let it get a little dry. I'm gonna take some Barnard clay. And we're gonna stick it on there. And then we're gonna let it set for a minute. and then come on in for a close up. So that's a real rusty screw. That is Hasbro's molded plastic screw with a little matte spray and Barnard clay on it. Rub it on there. And then a little bit of Barnard clay on each one. Look at that. Dude, dude, dude. This is literally one of my all time favorite techniques because it's just nothing looks better. Dude, look at that. I mean, it's just, it's so quick. It's so wonderful. Yeah, just that, just that, just. Lending a tiny bit of veracity. I began this video saying that it has never been a better time to be a cosplayer or movie prop fanatic because of what large companies are turning out in conjunction with their franchises. And I finished this video doubly committed to this stance. These are two versions of Hasbro's under $400 proton packs. This is one that is completely unweathered from the box, and this is mine after, what, about six hours of weathering, five, six hours of weathering. And the first thing I notice is this looks great. Like this looks a lot better, but this is really freaking good. Like, frankly, your average person isn't gonna be able to see much of a difference between these two models. Um, the weathering from the factory version 
is sort of an object lesson in how weathering can be both properly distributed but slightly uh, 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 unrefined. So the chunks of the weathering here are just a little chunky and need a little refinement, but not a whole ton. Uh, the couple of things I did do, replacing the yellow wire jacket, that made a huge difference. The copper, the little copper pieces I put around the base of these wires, it just kicks and makes this completely feel like an original piece. You can, upon initial inspection, see that these wires are all sort of molded piece of rubber all as one. The moment the copper jacketing went on, that went out the window with a little black weathering. Perfect. Oh, there will be a video in which I go inside and do a whole nother weathering pass on the inside of the cyclorama, cyclotron, the cyclotron. <laughs> But for right now, here is our A-B test, unweathered from the box, weathered from my efforts, and I couldn't, couldn't be happier. Is there anything else I should cover? Oh yeah, and the, 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 the burnt Stay Puff dudes. Mini Puffs, the Mini Puffs ship with this, and they are actually, honestly, the moment Norm and I started putting these on, we were like giggling, because they're a fantastic display item with the uh, with the pack. It also comes with some drippy slime that you can dress this with. I'm just not interested in that kind of dressing, so I didn't even investigate it. How about that? Dudes and dudettes and everyone in between, thank you so much for joining us for this one day build. And uh, Hasbro, from one maker to another, my hat is off to you. This is a magnificent achievement.